welcome everybody to season 10 or my 10th brew um, and in this introduction i'm going to talk about dry malt extract or dme now dry malt extract is simply your wort that's been um, dehydrated and converted into a powdered format for you ready for you to use and rehydrate at your convenience um, so in effect, what someone has done, an expert maltier, has taken all of the grains and already sort of seeped out all of the sugars um, that you needed and created the DME for you. So when it comes to actually sort of starting up your brew, um, what you can now do is simply rehydrate the DME and that's giving you your instant wort. Um, now another purpose for, um, for DME is an enhancer to brews. So if you happen to find that your brew is running short and the, the gravity that you were looking for what didn't quite make it, then what you can do is you can add a little DME to your brew late in the process just to bring up the level of sugars because effectively that's what it is. It is very natural sugars but it is all of the, it is just a sugar. Um, so effectively it's used as an enhancer in brews. But that's not what we're going to use it for today. We're going to actually sort of brew a real ale right from the very scratch. Now, this, um, this ale that I'm going to brew is a little bit of a Frankenstein's monster. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do um, right from the very start is make sure I was doing one gallon brews. One gallon brews is perfect for me. I can do it on the stove. Um, I can, I've got the equipment. Um, but most important of all, I can do lots of variety and have lots of different types of um, brews on the go at a volume that I can cope with, a relatively low volume. Um, now, um, the problem I had was many, 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 many brews um, actually are geared up to the sort of um, big sort of kits. So 23 or 19 litre kits, in fact. Um, so what I've done is I've created a little formula to scale brews down to my one gallon. So this actually started life as a 23 litre brew um, that I've scaled down to my size. And the ingredients look something a little like this. Um, and you know, and actually what you know what they started off as, for example, was three kilograms of light dried malt extract. So I've scaled that three kilograms down to what is the right size for my for my gallon. Um, now I'm gonna come back to the um, wheat extract in a second because that was something I added of my own touch and I will explain that in a little while. But the core recipe that we're going after for the real ale is effectively you know sort of going to sort of involve a couple of specialist malts. We've got crystal malt, we've got sort of chocolate malt, we've got some household sugar in there, um, we've got some hops, we've got some challenger hops which are going to be added at the start um, and then some Goldings hops which are added more towards the end um, and we're going to use an English ale yeast you know sort of this in this instance we're going to use safe ale SO4. Um, so our basic ingredients are fairly sort of straightforward um, and something you can purchase from a normal home brew shop um, which I had delivered a short while ago so I've been ready to go for a little while. Now a little um, information about those specialist malts though. Um, those specialist malts um, really sort of add a lot of the character to the ale. So effectively the crystal malt, and I'm going to quote here, you know, sort of the reason for using a crystal malt as a specialist malt in your brew is because it adds a caramel, nutty and biscuit flavour, um, adds foam stability and gives you a good solid body and mouthfeel. Um, meanwhile, the chocolate malt gives you a very much a chocolate and coffee taste. And, and actually, if you look at the ingredient levels, they were sort of much, um, much the, the chocolate malt was a much lower amount. So that's some of the flavors we're hoping to get out of this brew uh, by selecting those specialist malts. Um, now, the other good thing is um, I'm really, really keen on brewing a mild as one of my next brews. And these have very similar, although there's a few more, uh, very similar grains that are going to be used in that brew. So uh, getting a bit of experience before I jump into the mild uh, was something I wanted very much to do. The interesting thing then I think are also the hops. So the challenger hops which is added at the start of the um, start of the boil um, is very much a sort of strong spicy and fruity hop 
um, and typically, you know, and is typically used at the start of a boil. While the meanwhile, the Golding hops um, is something that actually sort of is, you know, typically provided for aroma at the conclusion, and that's exactly what we're going to see when we have a look at the um, the, the recipe um, for sort of all the, the sort of the the, the um, yes the recipe for putting this together. So let's have a look at that now. Um, so this is what the um, steps look like and um, the very first step is to take five litres of water up to around 70 degrees and effectively like a giant cup of tea um, effectively steep those grains for 30 minutes. So that's adding a lot of those grain sugars and grain flavours and aromas to our brew. We're then bringing it up to the uh, boil um, and we're going to add in 170 grams of um, We're going to bring in 170, I see a spelling mistake, 170 grams of um, extract at that point. Now that's roughly, you know, I don't know, 25% of the, um, or a third of the total extract. So we're not using all of it at this stage. And we're adding those challenger hops at the beginning, Golding's hops at the end. Then we're going to go into a cooling phase. Um, and that cooling phase is first of all to bring it down to 30 degrees, 80 degrees even, um, and then add some more Golding's hops and steep those Golding's hops for a further 30 minutes before finally adding the malt extract, the sugar and the wheat extract, come back to that one in a second, um, at the very end. Finally, we're going to cool it down to around 24 degrees um, and strain that out before we move into fermentation. Now, let me just move to the second page of that. There we go. Now, uh, once we move to fermentation, um, we are of course going to add the yeast, um, and then we're going to sort of, you know, sort of leave it there for roughly fourteen days, or you know, wish certain fermentation has completed. So, you know, two, gra you know, two gravity readings that are the same. Then we're going to prime, um, prime our sort of uh, wort, add it to bottles and sort of let it condition for a couple of weeks. So that's our goal, a relatively quick ale, one hopes, um, that will be produced as a result of, um, of this one. But also, you know, in addition to that one gallon brewing principle, one of the things that I'm very keen to do was to effectively um, start to sort of add some personal touches. So one of the th my personal touches to this is the addition of that uh, wheat DME and that wheat DME is added because actually that helps to sort of improve the body it also helps to improve the um, the ABV though that wasn't the key reason for adding it the main reason was for the head and and the head is something that um, you know particularly in a mild um, I remember sort of was you know sort of very very strong head and um, and a lot of the milds I've seen online so far actually haven't had that that sort of strong head and I want to try and reproduce that when I do my own. So this is my trial run, adding some of that to sort of see what impact it has on the, the head. So so that was a change that, that I made to the brew. We'll see what the impact, we'll see what the impact is. But again, you know, this is about experimentation and the one gallon brewing lets me do that experimentation um, and see what that, you know, what I can sort of come, come up with. So, you know, please do, you know, tune in and subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm having lots of fun with this. Um, um, I'm learning about broadcasting, recording, etc. So um, that's another reason for, for doing this in the first place. But I hope you're enjoying it. Please feel free to comment. Um, I've had some comments already, a few, um, and sort of I've kept in touch with those or responded to those as we've gone through, learning lots as we go through. Um, so I hope you're also enjoying your own home brewing experience and the very, very best of luck in all of it for the future. I hope you enjoy this particular brew series.